Hey everyone, this is Vanessa from the Storytelling Nonprofit, and I'm recording this quick tutorial today to show you how you can use Trello to create a story bank for your organization. So I personally love using Trello. It's a project management tool, but I think there's so many other great uses for it, including organizing content for fundraising and communications at your organization. Now, I've been asked for years about great tools or platforms or even templates for that matter to create story banks for organizing your stories. If you're not familiar with that term, it's essentially just a way for you to organize all of your story content and keep it in one place and for lack of a better word, just kind of catalog it because sometimes you have quite a bit and it can be difficult to manage or find all of that information. So I wanna show you how I use Trello to do this. And personally, I think this is one of the better ways I've found to do this over the years. I've tried lots of different tools and techniques to create a story bank that I think really works well, but I think so far Trello is one of my favorite tools for this. So I've just created a new board, and if you don't have a Trello account, I'll link to um, a link just below so you can set one up for yourself. It's a free tool. You don't need to use a paid account to do this. And once you're in there, you'll see this little plus button up at the top, and you just click that and click create a new board and you'll be taken to creating a new board. Now, I called mine Story Bank. You could rename yours something else if you'd like. And what I do is basically use the list functions to create a couple of different categories to keep everything in one place and really help to streamline my process. I think those are both really important points because we do a lot of things to keep track of, right, in our roles, and so staying organized and, and managing all of that information is really important. But also it's important to streamline the process and have a clear process so that everyone involved knows what's happening at the different stages and knows where everything is in that process. So I'll show you the four different categories I create for my list. So the first one, and you can just click and create a new list just like this, is story leads and ideas. So this one is essentially just a starting place for kind of inventorying all those ideas you may have, maybe leads that you get from colleagues, ideas you have for an upcoming appeal, ideas you have for an upcoming newsletter, or maybe social media series, anything like that. That's where you'll create a card in that list to say what those ideas are. Let's just say you want to tell a story about, oops, a story about, um, let's say your women's program and maybe a story about um, children's summer program. There we go. So those are just a couple of ideas and you of course can keep adding to that list. Maybe you'll have more specific ones than that, which is great and so I'd encourage you to add those there. The next list that you're gonna wanna create is one called interview notes. And I think it's fairly self-explanatory, <laughs> but this is basically where you can start to catalog notes from interviews you do with people. So these may or may not be turned into an actual story, but I think it's a really good idea to have this in place. So maybe you interviewed someone named, let's just say Jane, for lack of a, a better name at the moment. <laughs> so you can click the card to open it and you can type your notes here in the description box. The other thing you can do that I think is really great is if you choose to record your story, let's say on a, or your interview on a voice memo or recorder, you can actually upload it to this card as an attachment so that you don't lose track of it. So you can just go to attachment and select wherever you have it saved and upload it so that you have a record of it and you can keep track of that. Um, maybe you had it transcribed. You could also just put the transcription here in the description box as well. So lots of options for keeping track of those things, which is really fantastic. So the next list I would uh, suggest you have is stories in progress. So these are basically the stories that you've interviewed, done your interviews for, and now you're in the process of actually writing them. And again, so let's say we interviewed Jane, um, we would probably then just create another card for her over here. Um, and we would put that story either in the description box if you wanted to write from there, or you could upload a Word document attachment just so you have a record of where that is and where you can find it. And the last one that you wanna create is finished and approved stories. So I think this one is really important because this allows you and your team to see what you actually have available and can use. And so what I suggest doing is once things from stories in progress are completed and approved, just moving that card right over here so that you have a record of those things and so that they're not stuck in the stories in progress ones and you know exactly what the status of that story is. 
So that's it. That's a really simple and easy way for you to organize your story bank. I hope this is helpful to you if you're thinking about new ways to organize your content this summer. I personally think this is a really great streamlined, organized process that your organization can use as well. And if you're looking for other ways to streamline your communications and get organized because it's hard sometimes, you should check out Trello for MP comms, which is a brand new product that I've created that gives you access to nine pre-made Trello boards that you can use to organize your communications program. Everything from your brand elements to newsletter content to photo banks and so much more. I'll link to it below and hope you check it out this summer if you're looking for ways to organize your communications program and get your communication decks in a row.